and uh, also the maps i'm really looking forward to how much respect does ce bring and uh you know dedicate to the a-team are they going to take us to praxis holdout maybe is it finally time for that one we still have yet to see a single game of praxis hold all the other maps were played up to this point yeah we want to see it but it's yet to emerge let's have a look no it's available but for now ce are taking us to the towers of doom the towers of doom that used to be a ce exclusive back when we started casting them uh they yeah. would sometimes you know surprise us with that pick with no other team in china would uh, willingly go there can they do it again we're gonna find out we shall find out indeed as we are seeing the a team though with the first pick first ban as this of course was a ce map choice and let's see where we go here this is a map where abatha takes a high priority but a team instead beginning with a ban on alufal's tracer yeah, but even when the Tracer was available, I don't think Alufil immediately picked it. Uh, instead, we've seen him on Junkrat today. We've seen him play a lot of uh, Jaina and a lot of Hanzo these days. So is Alufil still that Tracer lover, that tra Tracer um, favorite? It, it's actually questionable. And look at that. They immediately go for the Jaina and the Garrosh again. No creativity no surprising elements for a ce here they just fall back to the stuff that they think is going to work out this time abatha completely ignored by yep. both these teams heading into this phase of the draft and that is very surprising to me due to his incredible priority on this map now it can still be run here by the a team the hat abatha on a Maev could be reasonable or on a johanna could have been uh, reasonable and mafurian ignored as the a team pick up deckard decker kane deployed other teams are not afraid to ban it first especially when you're playing against kt so beyond the game actually benefiting hugely from that remains to be seen if decker can be that deciding factor once more you can see the faces here the face of alufo stern focused no jokes no giggling they have no more space for errors no more room for mistakes this is true because see you're already falling behind if they lose mm -hmm. maps against uh i guess the a team now then it's only gonna get worse for their chances to go to the eastern clash coming up in august i think i can't remember i haven't looked at the website in a while yeah 13th of august mm -hmm. it's a week right, of my birthday so, yeah. so i remember yay nice um you will receive many messages now you've mentioned that on stream <laughs> as blaze is picked as the ban by ce removing solar laners as they are first pick after the ban phase so they're trying to empower their option the most yeah all right tracer uh i'm really sure if, oh man i just the focus on blaze every single game it's just mind-blowing i mean true it is a strong pick but do you really need to respect that much maybe it's just you know maybe it's a specialty for the chinese region because blaze as the anti-agro hero is just for chinese teams that like to go aggressively in team fights all the time maybe he's more of a bane than it is to other regions you know because in europe in na in korea even uh, we're not used to seeing teams commit so heavily to team fighting right one of one of the teams is basically going to retreat when they realize you know what we can't do that we're talent down yeah but in china that is not a thing you basically are stuck with it until the end and maybe blaze because of that disengage mechanic is just so dreaded and feared by a lot of these teams might be right that might be why or it might just be just due to uh, them going by statistics and just taking how well it performed at msv over how well it's performing currently mm. so that could also be the reason but now though solena is picked up to haka coming in for ce and malfurion as their support they could still pick abatha double jaina composition could still be available here Ooh, and if we remember uh alufal actually has played quite a lot of abathur here uh we could definitely put juyu on the jaina or quite the other way around juyu or kty could also play the abathur we've seen it in the past let's see which uh, role distribution uh we're basically going to see here coming in from ce on the flip side though could we see an abathur for the a team here johanna certainly not the worst of hat targets neither is the Mayev, and finally we get to see the return of Falstad. 
on Towers of Doom. Next to Ali Ming, not the go-to mage in China either. So A-Team, I salute you guys. I'm going to give you a this clap. Does also, this does also dissuade the Abathur a little bit, yeah. adding a global with some pretty decent burst into their draft. The A-Team really adding some control. They've got the disengage mm -hmm. tool as we wanted. A little bit of burst with the Li Ming. I really like the A-Team's draft. I really do so. I, I really do think that you're right. I like what the A team has brought. To me, like it's it's not really meaning that CE's draft is weak or anything, right? That's definitely um, not true. However, CE's draft is just mainstream. It's something they've been playing all season long to mix success. The fresh wind, you know, the the uh, the creativity is definitely favoring A team, and I think their team composition right now looks a little bit more, you know, tailored to the map and more international. That being said, though. Both teams have at Whoa. least one. Oh! Ho, ho. Whoa. No, Ooh, you did new. not. That's new. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, I can see several squishies. Waiting for chat to catch up. Waiting for chat to catch up. Because I can't wait. There we go. <laughs> uh, there are the poggers. <laughs> there are the pog chans. I'm loving that. it. Yeah. You know what? Too stealthy. Didn't see that coming. That. Wow. Okay. Cool. Nova being picked for the first time in three seasons of HGC China. Four seasons of HGC China, sorry. And That's the last crazy. time we saw it, Tetra, you remember what game that was? It was one of the last games in the season where basically the placements and the rankings could not be changed anymore. I think it was CE yeah, it was versus CE SBT. Trolling. Yeah. Uh, was it? Oh, no, it was SBT trolling CE. That was yeah. it. Yeah. So basically, uh, SBT was already locked in on that first place. CE was dead even uh, or dead um, fixed on second yeah, place. They, they went Nova and Gazo in the same draft, exactly. didn't they? Exactly. Oh, I, I remember. Man. So for them to pick the Nova in a game where it's actually meaningful for them to get points in, that's an, that's unheard of. That's insane. So we have a very sniper heavy day today. We've seen an Ana and a Nova coming <laughs> yeah. in. But that's crazy. I mean, burst damage is Fantastic. How they've got fought there's false that mm. Deckard. What is Deckard's weakness? Burst damage. He's gotta go for the shield yep. potion now. Let's find out if it works as we are heading into our first game of our fifth series of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be CE versus the A team, and CE are bringing the pay. It is Zhu Yu on that Nova. We saw it on the big screen, actually, and we're gonna introduce those fellas, those Matmen to you that are fielding the Nova with Zhu Yu on the Nova. KTY is playing the Dahaka 365 on Malfurion. Wind is playing on that Garrosh and Alufel on the Jane, and together they are CE. And on the right hand side, it is the A team with Jaina on the Li Ming, Olele playing Falstad, Bruiser on the Maiev, Stukov on the Deckard Kane, and Uncle G is playing the uh, Johanna. And yeah, this should be good. I am going to have to load up <laughs> a talent guide because I don't know any of Nova's talents. <laughs> Well, you know, they, the last time she was picked in a pro game. They, uh, they caught us red-handed here, you know, because we're both going to have to open our cheat sheets. So it's <laughs> <laughs> amazing, though. I, I'm willing to expose myself and make myself look goofy on stream. If that means we're going to get to cast Nova, I am very much down to that. But Tetcher, did you see how epic that Nova picture and that Nova portrait looked on the big screen, you know, in, the, in an epic setting offline? I never thought yeah. I would see it. It looks super cool, so let's see how they're able to use it. Juju already getting pressured by Bruiser here. 365 <laughs> with the heals, but he's able to pull back. Never mind, killed off by Jada. First blood. Oh acquired. boy, here we go. I mean, it was kind of... That's normally why you don't uh, try to run away from a... Excuse me, from a Maiev. That has got you on luck with that uh, Umbral Bind. Because yeah. first, first of all, it deals additional damage onto you. And secondly, you're going to get pulled in even further behind than um, you, know, you normally would have if you just follow her um, into the opposite side. So then came Jaina with a picture-perfect Li Ming combo. And Nova was blown out of her socks. And already CE, a kill down. Well, they're moving in, but they're a little bit outnumbered. KTY actually came down here trying to get something. They're just going to separate one of the sappers out, so that one will die independently of the rest. No, by the way, went for long shot level one. Just uh, increasing the slow and the increase. Uh, 
sorry, just increases the range of pinning shots and also just increases the basic attack range by two after the pinning shot. Yeah, absolutely true. So, uh, Zhuyu is trying to keep his safe distance, you know? And you brought up something. Oh, here goes a loophole caught by the Maev. And those rotations by the A-team seems to be something that they weren't expecting from one of the bottom tier teams, you know? But the A-team, we can't really sleep on those guys. They do have some experience. They do have what it takes to make those traps snap if they want to. Uh, but Tetra, you mentioned something really interesting during uh, the draft already, saying that Nova of all the heroes could maybe be the secret counter to the Decker Kane because he is so susceptible, you know, to that single target burst. Now, KTY dodging that scroll. I'm loving it. Getting a tongue out onto the false dead, but he is escaping in the nick of time with a sexy barrel roll over the wall. But Stukov on that uh, Decker Kane, he is definitely uh, in lost territory. My god, turns out the actual counter to Deckard Kane is bringing five heroes to gank him independently as Zuyu is left to kill him. Misses the snipe, uh, what? but they still take down Stuka. Okay. <laughs> on the Deckard Kane. Uh, Should specify people get confused. That would have been a little embarrassing. I don't think there's a lot of things you could do on camera um, that would make you look like a goof. Oh my goodness, look at Zuyu. He's not done just yet. He almost caught Olele and might even secure his team. Uh, yeah. That's going to be it? Oh, wow. Okay. They're trying. Now it's just about bot. It's three Five versus time. two right now. Everyone is rotating down. Jaden's going to make it a 3v3, but here comes Falstad. Deckard Kane is on the way as well. KTY, immediate drag on a Falstad. See ya, boy. He gets the shield temporarily. He turns around onto a loop to try and burst him down as the Frostbolt is missed. But Zuyu comes One. in and picks up the kill. KTY is low, but it's able to retreat. Wind gets the double stun. Zuyu dodges the scroll of ceiling. It's 4v4, but the health bars on CE are low. Looks like they might just be willing to give this up. Ooh, that was actually really good positioning there by CE, denying uh, Li Ming there another free shot at Garrosh, who dropped so low that could have been reset after reset. As it is, though, still a successful trade in terms of altars, 36-32, Nova Bless, and uh, yeah, all of a sudden that uh, Nova early feed turned out to be in Nova pretty uh good here so let's see what they can do we got the uh level four bribe of course called covert mission yeah that's gonna be cool don't see that often but it's a bribe on this map which are always pretty effective yep so nice to see that coming in big fan personally level seven is now in there nova is uh taking her sweet time maybe Julie is opening his own guide to double check on the talents just in case he hasn't played the hero all too much but it's the perfect shot hitting an enemy hero with snipe is going to reduce the cooldown by said snipe by three seconds and each hero hit also grants an additional precision sniper attack which is pretty interesting so more snipes more hurt yeah and precision that's gonna be pretty cool here so now what are we going to see on the reaction to this? Looks like we might just see all five members for both teams coming in. Dahaka's actually hiding out a little bit here, biding his time, seeing, yeah. him, seeing if anyone else is up here. Finally I... going to move up, grab his team some more XP. Dude, I just want to know what kind of heroic ability we're going to see. Are we going to see the precision strike, the very likely choice? Or maybe a triple tap to really deal additional burst damage onto the Decker Kane. The big disadvantage, of course, hold that thought. Lufal in trouble, doesn't have Ice Block yet, and gets absolutely demolished by the 18. Cruiser taking a little bit of damage from Zhuyu. Jaina also low. The sniper not enough to kill it, though. Dominance too good. Zhuyu will pull back, but Wind getting bursted down by the sheer damage output of the 18. Yep. Now, uh, the altar hasn't been uh, taken yet. So that is going to be a nice turnaround, a nice comeback for the A-team. Now equalizing the score. And if only a Lufal actually doesn't get caught there, then I think the whole team fight would have been a different one. It's very unusual, Tetcher, to see these positional mistakes by such a legend in the scene like a Lufal. It is a little bit strange, but right now he seems to just be struggling in terms of the fact he's squishy. And like I said, the damage output is really, really crazy from the side of the A-team. So I do not blame the fact he's uh -oh. dying. Jada will die here, though. That's not the kind of kills they want to be getting. KTY, assuming he can get out here. Nice burrow, nice and easy. Wind's looking for more. Instead, just going to gain a stack yep. as we do see Precision Strike. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, Precision Strike uh, adds a lot more to Nova's utility. Um, it is a global. It can be used to interrupt alter channels, which is uh, potentially going to be very, very important. 
if they make it all the way to level 20 and they go for the upgraded precision strike if they go for the barrage then she might even have two strikes available to deal all sorts of shenanigans she might gonna have to get there though gonna <laughs> getting to level 20 <laughs> yeah. on this map isn't the hardest in the world but it is certainly possible it is a little bit difficult sometimes sappers coming in ce despite losing a uh, heroes a couple times there's a hinterland blast by the way um that's cool yeah. I lost my train of thought after seeing that. This game's going a little ooly dooly, uh, as I <laughs> a term I coined earlier. I'm sure it's really a thing. I think I might have stolen that from Skimmy, actually, as a loophole. Ping's bruiser, a little bit of damage, not too much, though. Okay, this is a full dedication, full commitment to a wombo combo here with Li Ming, Hinterland Blast, and the Warden's Cage. If they blow up a target, that might escalate quite quickly here. Falset already using his flight to reinforce his teammates for that bottom altar. Dhaka is still chilling in the top lane. He's trying to find a good angle. Here he comes from the bottom. Oh, wow. Going on the tank and silence and Johanna is no more. Hinterland blasts into the back line. Only really hits Stukov. You can see Alufo wrapping around from above, though. He's looking for Bruiser, putting on the pressure as Falstad gets completely isolated by KTY. And CE are beginning to get control of this game. This is the CE that we know and uh, value. This is the CE that has become the Chinese champions in early 2018. Can they do it again with that Nova? Maybe it was the wake up call. Maybe it was the fun they lacked in this game. You know, especially Zuyu, when he played that Hanzo, you could really feel that he felt, I don't know, man, frustrated. Maybe might be the wrong word, but maybe jaded bored of always playing the same heroes you know and maybe the jonah uh, sorry the nova is the hero to bring back his good spirits he's probably gonna uh bribe now the top camp here with that covered ops the more hero takedowns you get the more charges on that bribe you're gonna get and as such offering additional map pressure lufal now this time playing much safer riding back to the towers and gates so ce is rallying ce is holding strong they are indeed looking good. They are hit level 13, full talent advantage now. Didn't think I'd say that. As Jade gets taken down, isolation on Deckard Kane. He will go down too. And that is a double kill coming in, looking for the triple, trying to get my ever Uncle G. There's Roots. the taunt. Uncle G drop low, and the Blizzard finishes him off. The roots are good. Those were masterful roots, by the way, capturing uh, several members when it mattered, which also means, of course, more stacks for the Nova. And Tetra, do you want to go over the 13 talent of that Set Nova? That is psionic efficiency. Extra range on Snipe, which is going to allow Zhu to stay a little bit safer. And if he hits with that Snipe, it refunds his mana cost. So purely relying on his skill shot efficiency here. All right. And while we have indeed seen a couple of Snipes miss, that of course can't be avoided if you're playing a, a longer game. We also saw some deadly assassination attempts, especially on Falstead and Decker Kane. And I think those are probably the two best targets to go for. Falstead only has one escape mechanism, which is the barrel roll. Are they going to let this go through? Look at that. Oh, look at that cheeky clone just intercepting the channeling process. And now they're gearing up and charging up, but they're letting it go through for now. Jaina on that Li Ming, dropping a couple spells just to keep everyone zoned away. Stop to maybe sneaking mm -hmm. in there and getting the interrupt. Nicely done there. As we can see, everyone else trying to pressure the bot lane, hovering around, trying to zone away any other members coming down to defend this. Lufal's very far forward on his own, but you can see Wind here is completely zoning anyone from coming in here for the gank. You know what really flubber gashes me? Go on. <laughs> The fact that Li Ming didn't go for the Disintegrate, right? Normally when you play against stealth heroes like Zeratul or Nova, you can actually use that uh, like a sonar, right? You can use it like a radar, just uh, always, uh, you know, proc that beam, proc that laser beam and try to guess, try to find that cloaked hero, which is normally a really cute way of dealing with it. But instead, the Li Ming actually win for the Wave of Force. And uh, I really think that up to this point, Zhu Yu on that Nova, uh, has had a really good time finding those hidden angles, finding those ambush angles. Oh, what well, of the Warden's Precision Strike! Bruiser is <laughs> dropped low, but tanks through. Now Uncle G getting taunted, immediately tossed over. Hinterland Blast has huge damage to KTY, but he's tanking through it, dropping the essence as Uncle G is Reason getting body blocks. blocks. 
This is, oh, they're so good. Down goes Uncle G. ATY and Lufal in the meantime are 1v3, are 2v3ing. Bruiser's dropped low. Water Elemental, though, dies in the death zone. Absolutely amazing. Did you see that Nova burst? That is, of course, the power of Nova. If you can't deal with her, if you can't reveal her in time. And I think ZE is just steamrolling away with this lead. Now, three levels total combined and accumulated over the course of time. Three level lead here. This is not going to get any easier, especially now with level 16 on point here. Crippling shot for Nova. The pinning shot lowers the hero's armor by 20, so that means even more damage. Even if you hit like the Johanna, uh, even if you hit the Decker Kane, it's not going to mean anything. Shots come in, down to 14 health. Olele is channeling and will be uninterrupted. But you can see CCE trying to move in. They will kill off Maiev here with the Twilight Dream. Warden's Cage will slow the rotation, though, as KTY is attempting to pick up more kills. Yeah, here goes Yuyu also on the chase, but they're not going to go that deep. Look at that damage onto the false dead, and Yuyu is doing the Healy combo. He's living the Nova Dream, killing squishies left, right, and center. Yuyu no might go down, gets killed. Oops, but stays alive. The damage output not enough. Jada on that Lee Ming is trying to chase forward. In comes the isolation, and we will see potentially a full team wipe. Yeah, it's a team wipe. So it took a while though. Bruce is already alive again. In this bag. Protect the MVP. Protect Sergeant Nova. I think that is by now the motto that CE seems to be living by. And everyone who has ever played against Nova in Hero League, in Team League, in Quick Match knows how frustrating it feels when she survives with just the sliver of health. The clone also intercepting the tower's aggro, the fort's aggro here. And that's it. Almost a perfect game. All the bell towers now in position of CE and those bombardments are going to commence. I mean... I am very impressed. Do you discovering that even though she he was able to bribe two of those mercenaries, it takes him a little while to actually burn through the remaining mercenary on its yeah. own. No, but not well known for her consistent think... damage over time. It's very bursty. That might be game. They don't have to worry I about the mercenaries right. in the top lane. That's going to bring them down to one. However, if those altars go through, if both of them go through, even just one, the game's going to be over. Yeah, but even one of these altars is channeled. That is game over. There's no cleanses or anything, so there's no way to maybe divine shield channel. Dark is channeling. Olele makes it down. The root does not land. Isolation is dodged. Not bad, Olele. Okay. Keeping his team in the game. He might even have to burn Hinge Land Blast if he's not careful. Dodges another. The sleep delay. 365. Begins to channel. Olele has the Hinge Land Blast now if he wants to keep his team in the game. Needs to do it now. Too late. And there's the channel. That's GG. And CE takes game number one. I mean, uh, China on fire with those exotic hero choices here. We've seen Zagara today do very well getting that win for SPT. We've seen Sergeant Hammer, not really exotic anymore ever since Rich decided to reinvent the hero. But now yeah. it is Nova for the first time deployed. And boy, oh boy, did Julia bring the pain. Nova 100% win rate.